Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates. The first one is about Rubial Muscara, aka Exila, after he was, uh, let's put it this way, misquoted for saying that his sponsors forced him to compete even though he didn't want to. What he did now is he made a post in which he's explaining that all the pages, all the news outlets were wrong, were making fake news for saying that he was forced into competing even though he didn't want to. And he also deleted his live, his video that he posted in which he was saying basically pretty much that. So I wanted to give you guys my take on this. Now, I don't speak Spanish, but many, many people translated to me what he was saying, basically. And yeah, sure, he did not use the words forced. And let's be real, all the pages use those words because of sensationalism. Let's be real, I mean, that's gonna attract more attention. But he did say that he was sick, that he wasn't feeling well, and that he decided to pull out of the show when he was already at Dubai, and his sponsors let's say, strongly suggested that he should do it since he's already there. And you guys know that Rubial was invited to the Arnold Classic, but he decided to pull out of that one. And his sponsors are probably paying him a lot of money to represent them, to, to do what bodybuilder needs to do to compete. And he wanted to quit once again, so I'm sure they weren't okay with him just, you know, pulling out at the last moment. So they probably told him he should do it since he's already there. And he probably felt like that if he doesn't do it, they may cut his contract. Which is kind of forcing him to do something that did not support the decision to not compete. So even though I understand that they invested their money into him and he already pulled out of a show once, they probably just wanted to see him get on that stage. But if he was really sick, if he wasn't feeling well, maybe risking his health and pushing his body when he feels like he should not do it and them basically pressuring him into doing it, that also doesn't make them look very good. So after what happened, they probably told him to make a statement, make a video in which he explains that what he said basically is not true. He's trying to walk it back, but it's, it's not working. Everybody knows what he said. The video is out there. People have seen it. People have heard what he said. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. Now, it's all about how his sponsors are gonna handle this. And here, as you can see, I mean, I don't know if this is another quote-unquote fake news, but what this page, who is the best bodybuilder, is saying is that there are rumors of uh, termination of his contract, Rubio's contract with his sponsor. But I'm not even sure which sponsor are they referring to, because yeah, he has a supplement company that is sponsoring him, that's probably who they're talking about, Yava Labs, but then also he's sponsored by uh, Nebia Fitness, the clothing brand, and also EVLS Prague Pro. And I don't know if we should consider Oxygen Gym uh, his sponsor as well, because I know how it works. Usually when you go over there, they pay for everything. They, they give you the, the supplements, the food, the, the gym, and the accommodation as well. So they are also kind of his sponsors. So we don't even know who exactly forced him to compete and who is potentially going to terminate his contract. But we'll see. Again, this is just rumors, as they say. Maybe it's not even remotely true. We'll see. But... When there is smoke, there is fire, usually. I'm sure his sponsors are not taking this lightly, because it looks bad on them. It looks like they forced a man who was sick to do extreme thing of doing a bodybuilding show, competing. And, uh, you know, he probably felt like he wanted to share this with us, because a lot of people were disappointed in his look. So he kind of said what happened, and he probably should have thought this through, because, you know, blaming his sponsors for stuff like this... I mean, yeah, he didn't use the words force him. How can they even force him? What does that even mean? The only way they can force him is pressure him into doing something because they're paying him money. You know, th that's the only way. And that is what he said after all. So he can't walk it back. It is what it is. We'll see what's going to happen. But, you know, him trying to, to go back and to say that it's uh, fake news now. I mean, he's just digging a deeper hole for himself. So, yeah, I mean, he, he's just very confused, apparently. He doesn't know what he's doing, really. I think he needs a manager or something like that. But, you know, it is what it is. You guys tell me down below, what do you think? 
All right, enough about this drama. We got some physique updates today, and the first one is from Regan Grimes, and he posted a little video and also uh, an interesting caption here. So he kind of updates us on his future plans because up until recently, I mean, we have no idea what his plan was, what his game plan is, I mean, what he's doing, what he's trying. Uh, recently he did that uh, Jay Cutler podcast in which he said that he's planning on competing in 2025, but that also sounded kind of not very certain, because he's becoming a father, he wants to be a dedicated uh, husband and father, so I don't know if we're gonna see him on stage next year, and how he's gonna approach his offseason in the meantime, but here he kind of updates us, and he says... Now that I've reached 300 pounds, I will continue to hold this weight, training hard, heavy, and working on density, so when it's time to cut, I won't lose the size. I was 260 on stage at last year's Olympia, let's work. And here is what he looks like, so 300 pounds, that's heavy, that's decently heavy, but I mean, he was 300 pounds like uh, 10 years ago when he went to the oxygen gym, so for his height, that's not a lot, you know? And also, at this weight, he doesn't look particularly hard, like, he looks, uh, you know, a little bit smoother, a little bit softer, he's not holding a lot of body fat, but, you know, he's just holding a lot of fluff, a lot of water, so it's not like a super high quality 300 pounds, so this is not exactly, you know, super impressive, it's not really what we need to see from Regan if he wants to be a top Olympian. Now, if he actually holds these 300 pounds the entire offseason and gets leaner and harder, and then, as he says, uh, cuts down and, you know, stays at around the same weight, maybe loses just 20 pounds, I mean, it depends on what he's doing right now, how he's holding this weight, maybe if he's doing a little bit of supplementation, and then when he starts prepping, he does a lot more, then, yeah, like, he can, you know, stay heavy and just get harder and leaner, but... I don't know what he's doing right now, and he says he was 260 at the Mr. Olympia, yeah, he was 260 at the Mr. Olympia, but he was like 270 or 275 at Italy Pro, where he looked, in my opinion, much better than on the Mr. Olympia stage, Mr. Olympia, he was, he was leaner, but he lost a lot of that fullness, so really, his weight at his best this year, actually last year, was around 270, 275, and of course, he was a lot harder, a lot more conditioned than he is right now in the offseason at like 270 plus. So really, he gained 25 pounds or so, and I think most of it is just fluff, you know, water and fat. So really, I'm not seeing any progress right now. He went to Dubai, he, he watched the Dubai Pro, he saw all those guys in person in the gym and so on, and he's probably super motivated right now, so he wrote that caption, like, he's gonna stay at his weight and try to hold his muscle, and then when he gets leaner, he's gonna keep all the muscle, but really, I don't think he has been working on improving himself as a bodybuilder uh, as, good, as much as he could, you know, so I, I don't think he's that devoted, that driven, and at this pace, I don't see him, you know, cracking the top five at the Mr. Olympia anytime soon, I mean, ever in his career, unless he changes his tune, unless he starts really, you know, being devoted like the other guys. I mean, look at what the other guys are doing. They're all trying and forcing their bodies and, and, and like doing everything it takes to make progress. And Regan, he's traveling, he's, you know, he, he's enjoying life. I mean, that's okay if that's what he wants, but if we're talking about strictly bodybuilding and results what he's doing and what he's looking like right now, it's not what we want to see, it's not, it's not ideal, but it is what it is, you guys tell me what do you think down below, and here is an example of somebody who is really working hard the entire freaking year, who is not traveling, who is barely even doing guest posings, who is just, you know, staying home, training, eating, and who is really focused on progression, and you can see crazy progress from Keon Pearson every single year, and that's why he won the 212 Mr. Olympia last year, and that's why this year he's gonna, he's gonna probably stay up there, I mean, I know Sean Clarita is coming strong, but if Keon improves, I mean, he, I don't think Keon was at his max last year, and uh, Sean already reached his max, so, and Sean also wasn't at his best last year because of his uh, gut issues, but if he fixes that, he's gonna be like, I don't know, 10% better maybe, and, and Keon, who already beat him last year, is probably gonna be maybe even like 20% better, I can imagine that, 
I think he can be like harder and fuller and bigger and everything. So I'm really expecting an improved version of Keon this year on the stage. Right now he looks nuts. I mean, at 10, 10 and a half weeks out, he's starting to look like really hard, really round and bubbly. The shape is coming. He is looking amazing right now, honestly. So I'm pretty sure he's gonna win the Mr. Olympia once again and probably reign for as long as he wants. I mean, this guy is phenomenal. Probably until he decides to switch to the open. And yeah, we also got a little physique update from Samson Dauda, but he is not doing bodybuilding poses. He's not flexing at all. He's just walking there, but you can also see that he looks crazy right now. However, this doesn't really mean much. We need to see him in bodybuilding poses. We need to see him conditioned. But from what he's looking, just walking, he definitely looks like the best bodybuilder in the world. You know, it's all about what kind of conditioning he brings. You know, he has the height, he has the size. And for 10 and a half weeks out, conditioning is very good. I just hope it's not going to start to stagnate from this point to the Mr. Olympia. I mean, right now he's perfect. Like this is where he needs to be at 10 weeks out. Uh, he's not late or ahead, he's right on time, the conditioning is spot on for this point, but he needs to keep chipping away slowly, he must not stop, and if he actually gets, you know, lean, like really lean, shredded, it's lights out, and I believe, I, I hope, I really, I want to believe that this year he's going to do it, he's going to deliver, so in my prediction video, he's still gonna be number one, I still think he's gonna win the Mr. Olympia this year, but it's not gonna be easy, it's not gonna be easy against Hari and Derek, it's gonna be tough, but I think it happened. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, for more bodybuilding content like this guys, subscribe to this channel, thank you so much for watching, all the best guys, and bye bye.